What's it like to work remotely as a software developer? Let's find out. Oh, you work remotely? Yeah, I do. How do you get anything done all day? How do you collaborate and pair program when you're not in the same office? Do you just sit around in your pajamas all day? Um, uh, no. I'm answering all of those questions and more right after this. Hey devs, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Nate, and this channel is dedicated to building great software and helping others do the same. So if you wanna be up to date on future tips, tutorials, and tricks, hit the subscribe button down below. Now, remote work continues to gain in popularity. According to Buffer's 2020 State of Remote survey, 98% of respondents said they would like to work remotely at some point during their career. So obviously, remote work is becoming more and more important to more and more people. And I think that's especially true in professions like software development that lend themselves really well to remote work and collaboration. Now, when I first went remote, I had a lot of questions. Questions like how to maintain work-life balance when work and life are happening largely in the same location. How can I be productive at home when other people are around or my pet is around? And honestly, uh, silly questions as well, like do I need to dress up every day? Can I wear my pajamas every day? I'll admit, I lasted basically one day before I spent all day in my pajamas working when I first started going remote. But as I will talk about later, I do not suggest that for most people. These types of questions are really common when considering whether or not you want to go remote. And after working remotely for a little over three years, I think I've started to figure out some of the answers to these types of questions, at least for myself. So that's what I want to explore in this video. I just want to talk a little bit about my experiences on how to be an effective and happy remote worker. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to share my three top tips for being successful and happy as a remote software developer. So let's kick this off with the question that started it all. What is it really like to be a remote software developer? And now for me, I think the biggest takeaway I've had from my experience working remotely is that being remote has enabled me to work around my life instead of living around my work. Now that is huge, especially in the tech industry where I do not believe that that is generally the case. In truly effective remote teams, communication is happening asynchronously. We're not always worrying about getting an immediate answer when we respond to somebody. We have to learn to expect that not everything needs to be responded to right away and that that's actually okay and frees up more of our time to do the actual work that we want to do. And speaking of work, work can happen anywhere. Do you want to take a three-day weekend? You can work on that extra day. You need to travel because of some type of family commitment. Not a problem. You can take your laptop and work. Do you want to work from the library, from a coffee shop, maybe from a co-working space? Sure, you could do all three in the same day. You can pretty much work from anywhere these days if you have your phone, a laptop, and let's say an internet connection. And honestly, those aren't even all required. In general, being a remote software developer gives you the freedom and flexibility to do great work from anywhere you want, anytime you want, and to collaborate with amazing people from all over the world. So, do you really work in your pajamas all day? So I think that this is a really funny and yet surprisingly common sort of question or misconception around remote work. For me, personally, the answer is no. I don't typically work in my pajamas. Uh, here, I am dressed, although you can only see the top half, I promise, the bottom half is also dressed. But with remote work, you do have the freedom to wear what you want, to feel comfortable, um, which I think is great because I don't think it's beneficial to us or our work when we are spending a lot of time worried about what we have to wear or being uncomfortable with what we have to wear. So that is one small benefit of working remotely. And honestly, it's something that does come up quite a bit when I talk to people. But how do you collaborate with other people on your team when you're not all together? That's a really fair question. And honestly, Effective remote communication is one of the biggest challenges 
when working in a remote team. Get it wrong and the results can be disastrous. It can lead to unproductive teams, unhappy teams, and really might make the whole remote experiment fail. On the flip side, if you can get it right, it can be seamless and you really won't even think about the fact that you're not co-located anymore. And now one of the biggest reasons that it can be seamless is because there are so many tools available to us these days. Want to chat with a teammate? No problem. Jump on a video call. We have Google Hangouts, Zoom, and a whole host of other similar tools. Do you need to chat with your team? Not a problem. We have Slack, we have Microsoft Teams, we have Basecamp. There's plenty of chat solutions out there. How do you track discussions or work items or propose new ideas? Once again, there's tools for that. Basecamp is great. You could use Trello, you could use GitHub Issues, you could use Jira. Again, we have tons and tons of options here that are easily available and easy to get up to speed on. More important than any of these specific tools, I think, is the ability to communicate asynchronously. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that when you send a message on a remote team, it works best when you don't assume that that person is going to need to get back to you right away. Instead, we can learn to recognize that not all of our messages are super high priority. In fact, most of the time when we ask a question, we don't need a response right then or even that hour or most of the time even that day. In my experience, a lot of times 24 to 48 hours is a very reasonable expectation to get responses back for most things. If you do have something that needs to be escalated, Maybe it's something that is really time sensitive. Maybe there's a crucial bug and you need to collaborate really quickly on that. That's when you can learn to escalate communication forms. So maybe you could jump on chat really quick and send a direct message. That's a little bit faster, a little bit more direct. Maybe you really need a lot of high bandwidth communication. That's where you could maybe jump into a video call and have some face-to-face -face communication. Learning when and how to escalate things is really important, but when you do it, you can really create a lot less friction in how you work with people and give people time and flexibility to do the work that they're supposed to be doing. Don't you ever get lonely working from home all the time? The honest answer to that is yes, it can get lonely working from home all the time. Uh, it's really important to know how much social interaction you need. For me, I'm kind of 50-50 introvert extrovert, so I like to have times alone in my office where I can be working and focused, but I also need time outside of the office around people. I don't always have to know them. I don't have to interact with them, but just being around people is really good for my mental health. Then as I have gotten out to co-working spaces, coffee shops and stuff, I have met people, made friends, and now I do have people that I can meet up with and co-work with. Couple that with really conscious effort to go out and meet people from time to time, particularly people in the local developer communities, to go out to meetups, to organize meetups, meet people. All of those things can really help me to not be lonely when working from home all the time. So I think this is all about knowing yourself. How much time do you need with people? How do you get filled up? Uh, those are the types of questions you'll need to ask but they're, they're very much things that can be worked around. And I don't think that being lonely is something that has to be a deal breaker when thinking about working remotely. Are you as productive working from home as you would be in an office? I'm just not sure that I would be. Again here, this answer probably varies a bit on the person. But for me, in my few years of working remotely as a software developer, I think that I have been just as productive from home, if not sometimes even more productive. And if that sounds strange to you, let's take a step back and let's think about what it's like to work in an office a lot of time. Uh, we're constantly getting pulled into meetings. We get distracted at the coffee maker, at the water fountain, uh, at the lunchroom. Uh, we get distracted just walking through the office sometimes or walking around campus. We lose time driving to work, driving home from work, uh, running errands throughout the day and having to get back to that office location. There's all kinds of things working in a normal office that take away from our productivity that we don't really question. So if we're working an eight hour day in an office, that might actually be a 10 hour day after commute 
And you might actually only be getting a few hours of work done by the time you take out all these other distractions and commutes and all those different things. So if you're working from home, you don't have a commute, uh, the lunch is maybe just in the next room, you don't have people that you're getting sidetracked with, you don't have as many meetings because you're embracing asynchronous communication, suddenly there's a lot more time in the day to get the work done. So I think absolutely, yes, uh, you can be just as productive in a remote work environment as you can in an office environment, if not even more so. So like I said, being productive as a remote software developer is quite a bit about what you make out of it, what processes you put in place, and just what works best for you. But I don't think there's any reason why you can't be just as productive as a remote developer, if not even more productive. Okay, time for my top three tips to be a successful and happy remote software developer. Number one, have a routine. We have all the flexibility in the world as a remote developer, and yet having a routine can really help guide us towards being more productive. So if you are more productive when you get up at a certain time or get dressed or have lunch at a certain time or end the day at a certain time, be consistent with all of those. Develop a routine that lets you be productive and maintain your work-life balance. Number two, location box and time box your tasks. If you're feeling distracted at home or in whatever location you're at, switch locations. Say, I'm gonna go to the coffee shop just until I finish this task, then I'm gonna come home. Or say, I'm gonna go out of the house for three hours, then come back. By switching up your times and your location, it can really help remove those mental blocks and jumpstart your productivity. And number three, and probably the most important in any of these, separate your work life from your home life. Even if you're working from home all of the time, try and have an office where you can go to be in that mental mode of work. Really try and avoid working from bed or even working from the couch. Try and avoid working from those common places that you wanna keep sacred for your family, for your pets, for your personal life. Try and consolidate both mentally and physically where you're working, where you're spending that mental time, that mental energy to develop your software, to check off your bugs, whatever it is, and keep that separate from the time you spend with your family. The better you are at that, the easier it'll be to avoid blending the two, and that'll really go a long ways towards avoiding burnout and keeping you happy and productive as a remote software developer. All right, devs, that's it for this video. Hopefully this helped shed some light on what it's like to be a remote software developer. If you have questions, let me know in the comments down below. I'd be happy to do more of these types of videos talking about remote work, specifically as a software developer. So just let me know what you're interested in. I'll be happy to cover it in future videos. As always, thank you so much for watching everyone, and I will catch you all in the next video. Until next time, devs.